Welcome to this next part of our gallery. Here we have two pictures that I would like to show you. We're going to talk about this one first. Now here is a picture which I probably don't even have to tell you the artist of. Can you guess it? Of course you can guess it. Such a recognizable style as this can of course only be Pablo Picasso. And if you don't know, he was a Spanish painter and he was also a sculptor, a printmaker, a ceramicist, a stage designer and he also wrote some poetry and some plays. Picasso was exceptionally prolific throughout his long lifetime. The total number of artworks he produced has been estimated at around 50,000 which I think you'll agree is quite a lot. And this comprised about 1,885 paintings, 1,228 sculptures, 2,880 ceramics, and roughly 12,000 drawings. There were also many thousands of prints and some tapestries and some rugs. But of course, the medium in which Picasso made his most important contribution was painting. Picasso achieved universal renown and also, we must say, immense fortune. Several paintings by Picasso actually rank among the world's most expensive paintings. Garçon à la Pipe sold for a US $104 million in 2004, which actually established a new record for the most expensive painting. Dora Ma Asha sold for a US $95.2 million in 2006. And then Nude Green Leaves and Bust was actually sold for $106.5 million in 2010. And in 2015, his painting Women of Algiers set the record for the highest price ever paid for a painting when it sold for a US $179.3 million. So, this picture that we have here is not quite so grandiose as those I just mentioned, but of course Mr. Impaler is vastly wealthy for reasons we cannot talk about. So this is his one piece from Picasso's collection. During the early 1930s, Picasso produced many paintings of his young mistress, frequently portrayed in seemingly deep post-coital sleep. This one here is Nude in Garden, painted in 1934, and it depicts his lover, Marie-Thérèse Walter, innocently asleep in a garden by a stream. Nude in a garden is an image of sensual abandon and submission with the entire naked body on display, vulnerable and trusting, asleep, softly dreaming perhaps. Marie Therese is portrayed with the arm thrown back over her head, recumbent, relaxed, extremely comfortable in her skin. Possibly this painting may be an expression of the sensual reawakening that Picasso may have experienced with her, being of course almost twice her age when they began their love affair. There are many such paintings as these, where Marie Therese appears as a collection of sort of soft pinkish curves and shapes. At this point of Picasso's career, he was not working exclusively in the Cubist style, but he would just move between styles as he pleased or as the mood dictated. And as you can see in this picture, the background is only sort of haphazardly filled in, almost as though it's less value to him. And apparently this was quite common. He once said, once I have expressed something well enough, I don't have the heart to add anything further to it. Now, we continue in this theme. I asked if you had noticed the theme, and it is, of course, reclining women. Mr. Impaler, of course, 
is a great fan of women in repose. This one, in fact, is entitled Repose, and it is by an American artist called John White Alexander. Repose depicts a really beautiful woman reclining on a settee, and it's a really wonderful example of the harmony of form and composition and colour. John White Alexander actually achieved international success with his studies of absolutely beautiful female forms, soft female figures, always quite gracefully posed in um, usually very elegant interiors. This example is of course no different. We see a provocative sort of facial expression here and these supple curves of a model who is decorated in billows of white fabric in her beautiful dress. John White Alexander first worked as an illustrator just like Mucha and a cartoonist in New York before he formally trained in Munich and then worked all over Europe such as Bavaria, Venice, Florence, the Netherlands and finally Paris of course. In 1881 he returned to New York and he quickly became sought after as a portrait artist which you can understand when you see the beauty of the portraits that he painted. His first exhibition in the Paris Salon of 19, uh, 1893 was a brilliant success and was followed by his election to the Société Nationale des Beaux-Arts. In 1901 he was named Chevalier of the Legion of Honour and in 1902 he became a member of the National Academy of Design. And these are just a few of the many accolades bestowed on him during his long and very successful career. But it's hard to imagine him painting anything more beautiful than this painting. This concludes our tour of Mr. Impaler's gallery today. I hope that you have enjoyed the selection of art that I have picked out for you. Of course, you are free to peruse throughout his manner, but I would urge you to take caution in any dark corners and any dark rooms, remembering that in the silence your heartbeat is very loud. <laughs>